Good morning. My name is Henry Thrun, and this week's Torah portion is called Ba Echanan, or And I Will Plead. It contains the Shema, a passage we recite every Shabbat. Deuteronomy 6 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Let's take a look at verse 4 in the Hebrew. Now, it's called Shema because that's the first word, translated to hear. This is a statement that God did not want his people, Israel, to miss. He wanted them to take it to heart. The English, our God, is translated from Eloheinu. Eloheinu is a form of Elohim, which is a generic term that can be used for false gods or for the one true God. In English, we usually differentiate the true God by using a capital G. Elohe nu means our Elohim or our God. The all caps Lord is how the New King James Version translates the Tetragrammaton, often pronounced as Yahweh today. This is the name of the God of the Bible. Now, this is important because I've communicated with people who believe Yahweh and Elohim are two different gods. This verse is stating that Yahweh is the one and only Elohim, or God, of Israel. Most take this to mean that Yahweh is the only true God. All other gods aren't really gods at all. They're fake gods, like created idols or fallen angels. Consequently, a lot of people then come to the conclusion that Jesus can't be God. Since Yahweh is the one true God, Yeshua can't also be God. He must be something else. For today's commentary, let's look into what it means that God, Yahweh, is one. First, let's go to the Gospel of Mark and see what Yeshua had to say about the Shema. Mark 12, 28. Then one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, perceiving that Jesus had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. Now this is important because I've also communicated with people who believe Yahweh and the Father are different gods. They say Jesus came to turn people from Yahweh to the Father. But as we see here, Jesus himself quoted the Shema, which states Yahweh is the one and only God of Israel. Yeshua was equating the Father with Yahweh. Also, Jesus here asserts the importance of the Shema. No commandment is greater than this one that states Yahweh is one. And the second like it is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So the scribe said to him, well said, teacher, you have spoken the truth, for there is one God and there is no other but he. Now we see the scribe was expecting this answer. Further evidence that the importance of this prayer was well known among the Jews. He went on to state what this means. As we looked at, He believes this means that there is only one God. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself is more than all the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. Now when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. But after that, no one dared question him. Yeshua affirmed the scribe's interpretation of the Shema, that Yahweh is the one and only God of Israel and that there is no other. So that means Jesus can't be God, right? He states it here, doesn't he? Well, let's look at one in the Hebrew. It seems pretty straightforward, but perhaps there's more to it. The Hebrew for one is echad and shows up in the Bible over 900 times. As I looked at its usages, the vast majority of the time it meant one, like the number. But let's look at some of the first instances it was used in the Bible. Genesis 1.5, 5, 
God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day, or more literally, and evening was and morning was a day one. We see one day was composed of morning and evening. We see two things that together are hot or one. They were still unique from each other. The evening wasn't morning and the morning wasn't evening, but together they were one, one day. Genesis 1.9, then God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. We see the waters had to be gathered together into one place. This means there were multiple bodies of water that were merged to form one. However, even though they were all gathered into one, God still used the plural seas or yamim in the Hebrew to refer to them. They were plural and one at the same time. Genesis 2.23, and Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. We have a man and his wife becoming one flesh. They're still unique from each other. The man is still a man, and the woman is still a woman. But these two unique things are joined together as one. Genesis 11.5 but Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And Yahweh said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language, and this is what they begin to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. There were many people who built the Tower of Babel, but God referred to them as one people. They were all still unique individuals, but God called them Echad. Genesis thirty four sixteen. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and we will become one people. Verse 22, only on this condition will the men consent to dwell with us, to be one people, if every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised. Here in the Dinah incident is another example of multiple individual people being ahad, one people. Genesis 34, 1. Or Genesis 41, 1. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream. Verse 5. He slept and dreamed a second time. Verse 25. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has shown Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven good cows are seven years, and the seven good heads are seven years. The dreams are one. Pharaoh had two different dreams. Joseph stated the differences here in verse 26. They were two different dreams, but Joseph said they were echad, they were one. So we have several examples from the first book of the Bible of echad being used for one thing that was composed of multiple things. Here are a couple more examples. The passages with the instructions and the building of the gold lampstand list all the parts. Both passages stated it was one echad piece. The tabernacle instructions and construction passages listed the clasps, loops, and curtains. All these pieces would be one tabernacle. So we also have two items used for the worship of God that were made of several parts but were each one. The lampstand and tabernacle were very prophetic of Yeshua. The Torah was sure to mention in both the instructions and building of each that they were both echad, one. Let's go now to the Gospel of John when the Jews asked Jesus if he was the Messiah. Jesus answered in John 10, 28, And I give my sheep eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Just like all these other examples we looked at earlier, where multiple, separate, unique things are chad, or one, the Father and the Son are chad, one. People ask, where did Jesus claim to be God? 
Well, I believe it's in the verse we just read, John 10.30. Remember how important the Shema was to the Jews? God made sure they heard and knew it. Jesus said it was the most important commandment. It would have been drilled in their minds. Yahweh is one. Yahweh is one. Yahweh is one. Then Jesus came along. I and the Father are one. The Father and Son are one. Yahweh is one. The Father and the Son are Yahweh. The Jews understood this is what Yeshua was saying. If we continue, verse 31, then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, for a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself God. This relationship of the Father and the Son being one fits with other passages, such as John 14, 9. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? 1 John 2, 23. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. There is only one God. His name is Yahweh, and he is composed of the Father and the Son. Naturally, the composition of God is a very deep topic and can't be fully explored in one commentary. I created a playlist on my YouTube channel where I'm putting my videos that are related to the topic. It's called Jesus is God. Also, Pastor Daniel has a very comprehensive 12-part series called Is Jesus God on the Corner Fringe YouTube channel. In it, he covers more biblical evidence of Yeshua's deity and addresses passages people often use as counterpoints. One of the videos in that series also discusses how the Holy Spirit is involved. Now, let's enter a time of worship of Yahweh, the Father and the Son. Shabbat Shalom.